Yes, everybody, welcome back to Talking Walls. Welcome back to a brand new match preview on the channel. The start of three consecutive home games for Walls. And this one, on paper, probably the toughest of the lot as we host Arsenal. The team still chasing the Premier League title, although they've slowed off a little bit, dropped a few points and fallen to second place in the league. We'll have my thoughts on that, the latest team news, and we'll get the Arsenal perspective later on in the video as well. Before we check out, please do check out our channel partners over at Football Prizes, a fantastic prize up for grabs uh, this week, a signed double, well, a double signed uh, framed, I get my words out, a double shirt frame display up for grabs, a signed Pablo Sarabia shirt, a signed Pedro Neto shirt, alongside their standard and normal instant win prizes as well. You can check out that in the link at the top of the description um, and all their tickets are available until the Wednesday of next week. But we welcome Arsenal to Molyneux uh, this weekend. Under the lights, half past seven kickoff at Molyneux. I'm looking forward to it um, as always. This could be go one or two ways because Arsenal have dropped points. They've been knocked out of the Champions League. They are fragile at the moment and it's a real... Let's see what reaction we get off them. Is Arteta, is Arteta going to sort of get this Arsenal team back up for it and make sure there is a title raise going down to the wire or will they just crumble? It will be very interesting. Wolves have had pretty decent joy and luck against some of the big teams so far this season. We've beaten Chelsea, Tottenham, um, Manchester City already at uh, Molyneux. We've given really good games to Manchester United and Liverpool and so on, taking points of Newcastle, Aston Villa. So Molyneux has been... Very a very good play so far. And it's because teams like Arsenal will come to Molyneux and try and play their football and attack. And Wolves love the counter-attack. With Cunha back, I feel Wolves have got an opportunity if we can get some more minutes out of Huang as well. Without Neto, I think it's going to be a difficult one. But it will be really interesting to see what Arsenal are going to turn up and how Arsenal are going to respond. But really, wall season on paper is over, but you want to still try and get a bit, a bit of momentum. Games against Bournemouth and Luton coming up as well. They're games that are winnable for Wolves, although Bournemouth have hit a bit of form. Luton are still fighting for their lives. They're not going to be easy games for Wolves, but I am really intrigued to see how Wolves react. And it's been a difficult um, few weeks, really, but players starting to come back now. And Wolves definitely have that opportunity to maybe have a strong end to the season. Now, with the latest team news, uh, Craig Dawson is still out, injured. Um, Gary O'Neill sort of late on uh, at the end of last week before the game against Forest pretty much said that they're expecting maybe to have surgery once again and it could leave Craig Dawson out until the end of the season. Leon Chiwomi as well, who had a bit of a run in the first team over the last few weeks or so, also going to be out for the rest of the season with an ankle injury as well. Now, you're looking for, to, towards the other forward players, jean rick Nabelgaard. Now, last week, Gary O'Neill said he was not 100%. There was a very, very small chance he could make the squad for Forrest, but it was unlikely. So, it would be interesting to see if he's any closer to maybe making the first team against Arsenal this weekend. Mateus Cunha, obviously back fit, started and got a good amount of minutes against Forrest and grabbed two goals. Really, really hoping... For, for the wall's sake and for my fantasy Premier League's sake, that he grabs some more goals over these next couple of weeks as well. Um, and Wanky Chan obviously back as well in contention, came off the bench against Forrest, got a good, made a decent account of himself as well and just added that little bit of experience and, I don't know, a bit of a spark that we've not quite seen with some of the youngster, young, younger lads playing up top. Um, Pedro Neto, not going to be back for this game, but good news is that Wolves have showed pictures of him back on the grass, uh, back training. So Gary O'Neill is hopeful that Pedro Neto is going to be back maybe for the last few games of the season. I'm hoping he is and he can show Roberto Martinez, the Portugal manager, why he deserves still to be in that Euro squad for Portugal as well. But other than that, not much of a team news to be completely honest. It'll be very, very interesting to see what the team lineup is going to be looking like ahead of this game. So here's my predicted lineup for this matchup. Uh, not many changes from the team that I suggested last week. Ryan Aitnor is one player, sorry that I didn't mention on my uh, team update. Still unsure on whether he will play. Gary O'Neill was 50 50 again on him before the Forest game. Um, and he was not in the squad in the end, although he travelled with the squad. So you're hoping that he's worked a little bit more in training and closer to uh, being in the first team squad. I'd love to start in a more advanced position again. Um, I've gone with this back five. I think Doc actually might start uh, at left wing back um, alongside Aitnori. Maybe that double up at times when we need to defend on their right-hand side. Um, 
Dawson, with him being out, it's a, the front three, uh, the back three, sorry, pretty much picks itself. Totti, Totti uh, Kilman, and Bueno. Samedo again at right wing back. A midfield two, Jao Gomez and uh, Lamina, although we could see Tommy Dawson start again if um, if Ain't nor he's not ready. Cunha up there with Pablo Sarabia as well. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments section if you think there should be any changes to that lineup. But we'll move on to the Arsenal perspective now. I spoke to James once again from AFTV to get his thoughts ahead of the game and what we can expect from Mikel Arteta's side. So then, guys, delighted to have James from AFTV alongside me today to look at the Arsenal perspective ahead of this weekend's game. James, thank you very much for jumping back on Talking Walls, mate. How are you keeping? I'm I'm good. Thank you for asking. I hope you're well too. Arsenal are testing me. <laughs> <laughs> look, it's it look, it's okay. There are loads of positives to take out of what's obviously been a winless game, a winless run of three games. But lots to play for. We can't um can't have our heads down too long. Yeah, I mean it's re like for a neutral. I'm, sh I'm sure if you're a City, Arsenal, Liverpool fan, it's a little bit stressful right now. But for a neutral, it's a really intriguing title race, and even down at the bottom of the Premier League as well, there's lots of points still to be uh, won and lost, and I'm sure lots of twists and turns. Other than obviously what's happened recently, James, Arsenal have, you know, they've been up there all season really defensively, been immaculate. You know, it's a fantastic defensive record, and albeit you know knocked out yesterday in the Champions League, a fantastic run in the Champions League as well. What's your sort of thought, summarisation of the, the season so far going into the, the business end? Ooh, it's difficult. It's been a very weird season. Um, last season was like a bit more predictable. And that might sound crazy to say because we, we no one expects us to be in a title race having missed out on top four. Suddenly we're in a title race. But I think once people recognised after those five, ten games, like, okay, Arsenal are actually a really good team. Um, we just kind of went from strength to strength, kept scoring goals, had the odd blip, but generally we're kind of doing really well through to this time a year ago. But everyone foresaw a bit of a collapse, you know, that getting yeah. over the line wasn't going to be easy, and, and that's how it transpired. This year's been weird because we didn't start great, and the results were kind of there. Large, I think we were still unbeaten in our first 10 or something. But there was something about Arsenal that was quite... Um, I don't know, it, we weren't quite clicking. Something wasn't yeah. quite there. Then the turn, you know, 2024 comes and we more than clicked. I mean, we argue we were playing for a stretch of about 11 games, the best football we've ever played under Arteta. And we looked defensively solid. We looked the most complete we've ever looked. And now it sort of seems to be tailing off again. So I wouldn't say it's a season where all year it's been an absolute ride and we've loved it. You know, of course we have, the position we've been in. Yeah. Uh, but it's not been a... It's not all been rosy. There have been sort of little ups and downs and moments and questions around this team, but they put together a run that made you think, okay, maybe this is the year they'll do it. And it still could be that, but we know we've had a few damaging results and um, it just makes you think that it might be a bit of this you know, same old as Arsenal, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, table as it stands, City top, you guys second and Liverpool third. I mean, it's only two points behind City, but with the way they're playing, and especially now both both teams knocked out in the Champions League, you're pretty you'd argue both teams will probably go full strength now for the remainder of the season if players stay fit. City are just one of those teams, especially at the, the business end, they just don't seem to slip up. And that's the one thing. I've just looked at the fixtures that you guys have got other than us. Still got Chelsea to play, albeit at home, Spurs away, United away. There's some tricky fixtures in there for Arsenal. If, James, obviously the, the FA Cup's out of the question as well. If you guys don't win the league, obviously knocked out, unfortunately, in the Champions League as well, what what's this class does for Arsenal? Because last year was so frustrating because you know you were you were leading the Premier League for a while as well. Is this a failure for Arsenal? A success because it, again you're heading in the right direction. What's the sort of consensus among the fan base at the moment? So I, I don't mean to be pedantic because this is probably me being just sort of deflecting the responsibility of a big question. Go on. <laughs> I'll put it this way: not uh, not winning is. It's not success. Just challenging isn't success, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I wouldn't call this a successful season if we go out of the quarters and finish second to Man City. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't call it a bad season. I mean, I'd call it yeah. I call it a good slash very good season. A great season is getting over the line and getting those trophies. I don't want to live in a world where, you know, everything's defined by trophies and nothing else. You know, basically, don't enjoy nine out of ten months of the football schedule apart from 
the bits where the silverware is lifted. Because <laughs> yeah. like, what are we all doing here then? Like only, you know, a select few clubs per year, you know, enjoy that kind of moment. And that's what makes it so competitive and so compelling. It's so special when you do get over the line. So it will still be a very good season with the football we've played, the strides we've taken, uh, we've taken this season, going unbeaten at Anfield and the Etihad, beating, you know, both our title rivals at home. And if we've slipped up and, you know, there have been moments that have gone wrong, we try to address it in, in the window. A lot of people will feel... And I think this kind of leans more into what you're asking. Essentially, it will be a, it will be another year where Arteta has fallen short of the expectations. Two years ago, it was you know top four. Last season, it was the title race having been eight and five points ahead, uh, and this season again, the title race having led with seven games to go. Um, so all that will be yeah disappointing, and there will undoubtedly be question marks about Arteta. But it wouldn't be a bad season. It'd just be a disappointing end. You know, what could have been great ended up just a good season um, or very good, however you want to look at it. Um, I think our exits of the Cups are disappointing as well. I didn't think that has to play a part in all this. Um, so I'm positive about the team and its direction for the long term. For the short term, I have concerns that we're entering another barren spell of results, which we tend to do around April. Yeah. I suppose you could say well, it's been productive for Arsenal. I suppose the fact that you're still up, still up there and challenging again is a, a good thing. Bearing in mind, sort of the years after Wenger, I mean, towards the end of his tenure at the club and with Emery and so on, you really struggled to become that sort of giant that pe- and top fourteen that people used to associate with Arsenal. Arteta's definitely got that back the last couple of years, but it's a little bit like Wolves this season. I mean, there were a lot of fans at the start of the campaign thinking, "Right, that's it. We're going to get relegated because it was an absolute mess at the club." Gary O'Neill got us to a point where two or three weeks ago we thought, hold on, we might creep into Europe here. And it's slowed down a lot now. We might end up finishing 10th, 11th. And because that last stretch of the season, you've dropped a lot of points. That's all everyone remembers. Oh, it's been a rubbish, rubbish season, really. Well, in fact, the fact people were thinking we're probably going to finish 10 points lower than what we're, uh, 10 places lower than what we are. You know, that, yeah. that t- says a story, really. But I suppose it's a little bit different for Arsenal because there would have been fans at the start of the season wanting to you know you should expecting you to be in and around this sort of place but um i quickly touched james as well on the champions league i didn't catch the game yesterday unfortunately but i saw the arsenal official account put a tweet out saying something like a, a journey to be proud of or something like that some people didn't that take that too well what were your thoughts on that no look i and i'm i'm no stranger to celebrating a bit of mediocre mediocrity every yeah. now and again i got clipped up for uh celebrating the draw at the Etihad and the reason I was so happy about it. Was, <laughs> I think I saw that. <laughs> and the reason I was so happy was because um, it wasn't even so happy, A, because we stayed ahead of Man City in the title yeah. race, but B, it was a performance I was really proud of and I was just mm-hmm. sort of happy that the players showed they could go there and go a whole Premier League season without City getting the better of us. So I saw a yeah. lot of positives in that. Um, but when it comes to this, I don't think in a group with Sevilla, Lons, PSV, you know, scraping through Porto on pens, and then kind of going out quite limply to buy. And, you know, when you've got 30 minutes to throw the kitchen sink at them and you do nothing, I don't think that was the right tone, you know, a, you know, a, a campaign to be proud of. Yeah. There are undoubtedly positives. First year back, for years we didn't get past the quarters and we went out to teams we shouldn't have gone out to. So it didn't make a pass around the 16. This time we made it to the quarters. And we we were in that elite group of eight teams where you think there are some great games here and some great sides. And I think we made a good account of ourselves. I think Bayern respected us and we played some really good football at times and we we got on the ball at the Allianz and we did some decent stuff. You can see this team is going the right direction. You can see that Arteta is a very good coach. I do feel, though, ultimately, same with that Villa defeat in that second half, you know, the the last 30 minutes at, at the Allianz just gone out very limply, just gone out very like, uh, you know, all right, well, a bridge, bridge too far for us is what it is. That's how it looked on the players. And I know that's not how they're thinking because they've got great mentalities and they speak brilliantly and we see they give their all. But I I just think that the tone of that post was a bit like, we're not, I don't think we're feeling that proud of our efforts. I think we're feeling yeah. like this was a really missed opportunity. We didn't leave it all out there. Yeah, I'm a big fan, of, unless it's like a rival team, I'm a big fan of the English teams in European competition. I'm a little bit old school or that. Like when I was City and Arsenal, I wanted them both to qualify. And I think 
whether Arsenal have got through and played City or Madrid, I think that would have been a, a fantastic semi-final. I think Bayern yeah. obviously will put on a spectacle, but I think having Arsenal or City in there as well, or even if it was both of you guys against each other, that would have been fantastic to watch as well. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a shame it's just not gone quite to plan. Um, yeah. Looking ahead to the game then, James, Arsenal, obviously huge talent across the pitch for you guys. Um, obvious players like Saka, I think he's slowed down a little bit of his output over the last month or so. Anyone in top form going into this game? Anyone that Wolves have got to really be cautious of? Erdegaard. Erdegaard has been magnificent. I think struggled at times at the Allianz, but also created our best chance and looked the most likely to make anything happen. Um, he's been a real captain, especially with the way he conducts himself. And he, he, he puts himself in the wars. He works incredibly hard. And he always demands the ball. When I say he puts himself in the walls, I mean, when things are difficult, he demands the ball. And yeah. he can play, some, you know, I thought against Villa, I couldn't believe we lost that game because we should have been three and a lap at half time. I thought he was tremendous in that game. He's really the informed player. And then otherwise, I'd say beware of Saliba and Gabriel, who look like they yeah. stuttered a little bit against Bayern and Villa. But then at the Allianz, I thought they were great. So, yeah, um, they're the kind of main informed players. Ben White's largely had a very good 2024. Saka and Martinelli, their output has slowed down. Trossard has got moments to give. Jesus is an unpredictable player. If he scored a hat-trick on the weekend, I wouldn't be surprised. If he missed four yeah. chances, got subbed off, I wouldn't be surprised. You just don't know what you're going to get from Jesus. I, I feel watching Arsenal that the team is tiring. And that's not, I've said this on sort of other pieces of content I've been on, that's not an excuse. That's actually a criticism of Arteta's man management for me. I think yeah. he's not, not, not man management, squad management. He's not managed the minutes of players right. And we've been saying all season that Saka's playing too much football and now you can see he looks exhausted. So I feel a bit sorry for Saka and I feel a bit sorry for um, some players that I feel are just haven't quite been managed right going into this part of the season. So I honestly don't think we're arriving with our forwards in great form. I mean, Kai Havertz was brilliant at Brighton just two weeks ago. So, you know, that would, you know, that was the last time we were on the road in the league. So there's every chance they turn up and look, look a million dollars, but I just, a million dollars actually wouldn't be enough when we're talking football. <laughs> uh, million. But, um, but I don't think the, players' confidence is quite there, if I'm honest. Yeah, it'll be, it will be interesting. I mean, Wolves, like I said earlier, have slowed down a little bit. Quickly going back to the game that we when we went to the Emirates in December, yeah. as well, I remember that game because that was probably the most one-sided half of football I've seen all season in that first half. And obviously, you went in 2-0 up. And then we yeah. got that goal with about five or ten minutes to go. And I think our... I remember after the game, Arsenal fans were so frustrated with that performance because although you won, it's sort of similar to what you were saying earlier, didn't feel like it had been clicking. I think that was almost a perfect, perfect sort of match to show that because pure domination. I just looked at the stats. I thought the possession and everything would be a lot higher. You finished with 57%, which is still a huge amount. Um, but I remember that first half, I thought this could be like five. I know people that went to that game and left just after half time because Arsenal were battering us so much. And in the end, it turned out to be a lot closer than what it was. Has that been, have you seen that quite a few times this season? Definitely at that part of the season. So um, I'll try, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be polite because I'll see Wolves channel here, but I couldn't believe we didn't win that 6 0. Yeah. I came with it just like that was a 6 0 performance and, and, and we got, and it became a nervy ending. Great for And that was so frustrating about Arsenal. I think. Those missed chances are very comparable to what we just did against Bayern and Villa at home. You know, games where we missed opportunities and we're really regretting that. Um, luckily, we did just about enough to come through in the Wolves game at home. But there are others. Brighton, we won that game 2-0 around the same time we played you. It was a 6-0 performance. Severe, we won it 2-0. It was a 6-0 performance. So yeah. we, we when we went on this run at the end of January to about end of March, beginning of April of five at Burnley, uh, six at Sheffield United, six at West Ham, five against Palace, four against Newcastle, three against Liverpool, which completely transformed the, the complexion of our goal difference. That actually wasn't that surprising because we'd had games where we should have been scoring that amount of goals. Yeah. Um, so we kind of started the season where the football's not quite there. Then the football arrived, but the chances weren't being converted. Then the magic, everything just happened. Chances to goals to everything. And now recently we've had a bit of a confidence hit. Um, I don't expect the same game this weekend. I don't. At Molyneux, you're different. I think Gary is a very good manager who actually wants to have a go. I think I think yeah. he'll sense Arsenal might be a bit wounded, a bit of a wounded animal and want to 
have a go. I think this could be quite an open game of football because I think Arteta will be quite angry after the last sort of few results. And I think he'll be thinking, hold on, we're two points behind Man City, not all is lost. And I think he'll want his team to flex a little bit. So I'm actually expecting Arsenal to respond this weekend. Um, but I've I've got, you know, the utmost respect for the the, the task that is Molyneux. You know, whenever yeah. we've won that, it's never been easy. Even last year when we were flying, I think two goals in the second half got it done. It was difficult. There had to be intricate, well-worked goals. Um, City have lost there this season. Uh, Liverpool, you should, you'll should wonder up, I think, going to half-time. Yeah, should have beaten them. them. should have beaten them. We lost 3-1. Chelsea yeah. have lost there. Tottenham have lost there. So I know the task at hand. Don't get me, you know, I really do. But I think Arsenal will respond. It'll be, yeah, it will be interesting. I think Gary O'Neill, will, uh, well, Wolves will allow Arsenal to have a lot of the ball. Counter-attacking's, you know, our, our thing. And he, obviously, unfortunately, we haven't got the likes of Neto, who's, you know, one of the biggest so reasons we beat City. But Cunha's back. Huang will probably get some minutes as well. I think if Cunha starts, just exploits like spaces in behind so well, even though he'll come deep to get the ball, just running it out of those players. Is there anyone else that worries you, James, going into that game other than the guys that I mentioned quickly? Uh, I mean, those are the, it is the guys you mentioned. Of course, Ike Nori has been in great form, hasn't he? Um, yeah, hopefully he's fit because he had a little yeah. knock a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully he's fit. And he seems to be playing, I mean, like I said, uh, not that I'm an expert on Wolves, but he does yeah. seem to be popping up in central areas, wide areas, forward areas, just wherever. Yeah. Just playing with real freedom and the beauty of playing sometimes at the back three is that you let your wing back just really go and express exactly. themselves so um so i think there's a i think there's a good chance someone like him could be a problem i i did it on the preview for the villa game i said we haven't done well against overlapping fullbacks and wing backs generally um so if he's available i think he causes some problems pet neto's the one we always keep an eye on because we want him <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because yeah yeah he's, very, very good. Um, and he can go left, right. He's just, you know, very direct, exciting player. Um, Sarabia, is he getting game time at all? Because, yeah, yeah, because I, I, I like sorry, I, I like Gomez as well. Jao Gomez, yeah, I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Sarabia, he's technical. I like him. Yeah, Sarabia's so playing a lot because, uh, like I said earlier, Huang has been out injured. Neto's still going to be out for this game as well. So Sarabia's played a lot. Games like this will be interesting because he struggles a lot when Wolves probably should have the upper hand sure. because he's physically, you know, he's not rapid, he's not strong as such. He struggles in those games a little bit. But I think games like this, if he can find the players like Cunha or Ray Nori running in behind and Jao yeah. Gomez could have a brilliant game as well. I mean, this is almost the perfect game for him. I think Wolves want to keep him in the summer, but it wouldn't surprise me if some big clubs come knocking. Um, and this is the perfect game as like a stage for him to show what he can do against the the big boys. So... I would be intrigued to see uh, to see how he gets on. Definitely worth remembering that he didn't start, did he? Nor him, him nor Lamina at the Emirates. I think when we beat. Yeah, you're up. right. It was uh, Tommy Doyle, Doyle and Bubakar. I think Bubakar Troy right off yeah. the top of my head. Yeah, that might be right. So I mean, yeah. that would maybe part, be a part of why, especially when you play with more of a midfield two, you know, central two. I mean, I mean that might explain why Arsenal were able to get such an upper hand on that game. So yeah, that'd be interesting. I mean, I remember Zinchenko. He was the reason, yeah. You know, he gave the ball away for your goal. Yeah. But he was the reason we go two and up and he played some brilliant football. Some great balls um, across the face yeah. of goal, yeah. Yeah, and, and so will he get the nod in this game? So Artes got some big questions to answer going into this and yeah. uh, be interested where he goes. I, yeah, I am interested. Cause like I said, both teams, Wolves aren't on great form. Obviously, Arsenal have dropped points and a little bit disappointed. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. So then, James, before we finish off, can I have a score prediction? What are you thinking ahead of this game? I went for 2-0 talking about on AFTV, so I'll, I'll stick with that. Um, I just feel that, I feel like Arsenal, last year when the run-in happened and we kind of capitulated, we were playing badly. Like we were yeah. conceding chances and we just looked a bit of a mess kind of mentally and physically and all that. I don't think we've looked a mess in these three games where we haven't won. I really don't. I think... I think we've been we've gone out limply. We've been disappointing in the way we've ended games, um, and we've conceded some silly goals. But I don't think we've looked some terrible side. I think Villa and Bayern will feel they had to work hard to get those wins against us, and maybe feel that you know what they rode their luck at times with the chances we did have yeah. and some of the we did have in those games. So I don't think we're a bad side. I think the players want to prove that. I think they want to go. Hold on, you're calling us bottlers, right? You're all saying that we're this, that, and the other, but will show that we've not been playing badly. And it takes for one of those halves where we've been dominant 
to yield a leading score. You know, do that and then we'll build it in the second half. But maybe that's me being optimistic and hopeful. And actually, it's not even just that. It, that's what it has to be for Arsenal now. It cannot yeah. be another capitulation. It becomes a serious problem if it does. So I want to back the team to show everyone that they are um, still a good side and that they believe in themselves. And um, I'm going to go for a 2 0 win. No, fingers crossed. I'm, I'm hoping it's a good game under the lights at Molly. Always good. Quite a late game for a Saturday, James. But yeah, as always, really. appreciate you jumping on Talking Walls, mate. Best of luck for the rest of the season as well. Be great to see a, a, a couple of more twists, possibly in Arsenal's favour in the in the title race. And I'll make sure I leave the link for James and AFTV in the description down below. Uh, thanks for jumping on, James. Fingers crossed. I'll talk to you again next season. Thank you so much. Absolutely. In a bit. Cheers, mate. So big thanks to James. It's a pleasure as always. Great football chat with James. And I'll make sure I leave a link to him and the AFTV socials in the description down below. Uh, let me know your thoughts and score prediction. I think my head is saying a 2-1 Arsenal win. But my heart is saying we can nick this. And a 1-0 Wolves win. But do let me know your thoughts. Arsenal score goals. Don't concede a lot. So let's wait and see. And are Wolves going to whimper out this season or can we get a little bit more exciting and still carry on climbing up the table and getting more points on the board? Do let me know your thoughts. Let's hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, guys. Enjoy the match. Enjoy the weekend. And I'll catch you all very, very soon.